and hello again and here we are back in my drive on quite a sunny day for some more work on the Mark II project. So in the last episode we finally got round to making the bracketry to map the headlamp, the indicators and of course the new digital speedo tackle unit. So with that done I've now got a mountain of wires here that needs to go from the front of the bike back towards the centre where the M unit is because most of those wires are going to end up in the M unit. So today we're going to make a start on building the wiring harness from scratch. I'm not quite sure how far we can get because obviously I don't have an engine yet but I reckon I could do maybe 80% of the wiring on this bike even though I don't have an engine. Okay that's better so I think I'll start off by wiring up the headlamp, the indicators and the rear lamp and the rear indicators because that's pretty straightforward very simple the wires go from the front and the back of the bike towards the center of the bike to the M unit here so all I've got to do is work out which wires do what add some uh, connectors and extend the wiring back so it reaches here so what I'm going to do is run all the wiring on the left hand side of the bike here into the tank but since the M unit's now on that side I've got to do a little twist it's got to come underneath the seat across and over here so we'll see how neat I can do that in fact I can just check under here there's plenty of room here yeah there's no problem really because I don't have an air box there's a huge amount of room going spare just above the battery tray so I shouldn't have a problem with that right so let's begin however before I uh, start the wiring I've just realized that I forgot to paint this big thick aluminium bracket I'm using to mount the M unit to the existing mounts on the battery box so before I begin wiring it I'll take this off and get it painted get it back on the bike and then we can begin and so while that paint's drying I can still make a start on the wiring so what I've done is I've grabbed some suitable yellow wiring because for some reason I always use yellow for indicators so I've just measured out roughly the length I need for the two rear indicators to go from there to the M unit a bit over long but so it's better to do it too long rather than too short now as you can see they're both the same color and that's because well you can't really get it wrong with left and right indicators on the bike so it's not a problem to have them the same color so what I've done already is I fitted one bullet connector which will go straight on the existing connectors on the indicators and the rear lamp because you don't want to be cutting off existing connectors unless you really have to. I really like these because they look quite uh, OE, quite factory. And so here are a pair of bullet connectors, female and male. What I like about them is they have this as well, this sort of soft rubber, almost clear plastic cover. I really like that. So if we now look at one of these wires and bring it here this is how it looks so you just sort of slide it on from the other end slide it on and there you go there you go it gives good water resistance and what I like about it is that being quite soft this won't damage any paintwork any powder coating where it rubs against the frame or any part of the bike what I also like about these is that you can cram in quite a lot of them in a small space you can get them perhaps in um, an area underneath the tank it's not a problem which is why I really like them so to fit these these bullet connectors what I've got is a couple of tools here I've got the wire strippers you don't really need them but they do speed things up an awful lot because what they do is where are we where are we let's get another wire there we go you can't tell what I'm doing over there but uh, basically you just get your wire put it in pull it and it strips off a little bit of the wire it's ideal it makes life a lot quicker when you're wiring a bike because you're going to be doing that hundreds and hundreds of times on a bike so that's great the other thing I've got is this little thing here in fact this came from all the way from Japan not sure why I got it from Japan because it's actually not that good but they're just um, crimpers for crimping your your bullet connectors on on the wire and this is the thing that I hate most about wiring because you need to look very carefully sometimes you do it you think it's okay and it falls off because you're not doing it right so yeah I have to wear my uh, my glasses for this because otherwise I can't see I need good light and glasses if you've got a better eyesight than me no doubt you'll be fine but uh, yeah it does take quite a long time but it's worth getting it right so once you've done that what I will do then is combine together maybe five or six of these wires I've got two here for the 
indicators have got another three or four for the rear lamp and combine them in a sleeve in a shroud to take them all to the appropriate place and those shrouds here's one here are these things they're nylon i think i want to describe them like a snake because when they swallow things they expand because you can you know you can get your finger in there and it'll expand quite a lot actually i mean you can get i don't know 20 wires in there the only problem is that when they do expand and you cut them to the right size oh, can't get my finger out now come on yeah they um they fray at the end which isn't ideal i'm not sure you can see that they're all frayed so what i do is i take some heat shrink and put that on the end shrink it down and it keeps everything nice and neat it takes time it takes time to do it right but it's well worth the effort i think so yeah that's what i'm doing right now so i'll just go and give that plate another coat of paint when it's dry we'll get the m unit back on the bike and then we can continue and now as you can see i am making progress i've got quite a lot of wires in the output terminals of the m unit but nothing yet on the input and that's because the input wires are very very tiny and very delicate and i'll do those right at the end so i'm working with my test battery here i've been trying out all my circuits by putting an earth on the frame and then putting a uh, some power through each of those wires just to make sure that everything works before i plug it into the m unit that makes sense i've also been using my multimeter here checking for resistance here and there just to make sure my earth's good and so on and i've also been using of course down here on the floor is my homemade wire diagram that i'm following very carefully so yeah it's going okay it's going okay so far however i am about to hit a problem that i found before with the m unit and that is that if you're using suitable wiring such as a one mil squared wiring that i'm using you can only get about two wires in each of these output ports and sometimes that's not enough so for example for the two ports for the indicators left and right I need three wires going in there I need a wire for the back indicator a wire for the front indicator but I also need a wire to go to the speed attacker unit for the idiot lights for the indicators being on and guess what they don't all fit so that's a bit of a problem that's a bit of a problem so the way around it I've used before is either I can combine two or three wires before it gets to the M unit with like a connector or something or just solder them all together and then get one wire into here here. or for example on the 1170 i use what's called the bus bar because the big problem i've got here is not for the indicators but for the 12 volt ignition power circuits because i need a lot of those i need about five or six different wires all trying to get into one port and guess what they don't fit so what i've done is i've taken one wire from the ignition port and taken it to what's called a bus bar which then you can attach you know five or six wires to that which can then go off to power the rest of the bike things like the coils ignition system the speed attack on unit itself and of course the gps sender but that's uh, a bit untidy and it's a bit of a pain to do and you know it means drilling the battery box and so on so i am going to try and program this m unit because you can program them that's a bit awkward to do on this basic version but on the blue version i think i can do it with my phone not tried yet but what we've got here is on the m unit we've got three additional what are called auxiliary ports ports here at the end and those ports you can program to do whatever you like so i can program it to say send power when the ignition's turned on and if that works which hopefully it will then i'm okay because i've then got you know an extra six possibly i've like got three ports therefore i can have six wires and that should be enough for the wiring harness on the bike so yeah it's all a bit uh, a bit fiddly oh and by the way if you're wondering how we secure the wires into the m unit the answer is that these little orange squares next to each of the holes is spring loaded and if you push this little orange square in it opens up a clamp at the base of each port which then clamps the uh, the wires into position so if i now push this wire in i get my little pen nib here just to push in the square push it in hard and then you push your wire in let go and it's now secure so it's pretty easy you know seems to work very well and uh, yeah that's how it works 
and now it's going to be late, it's getting a bit cold out here on my drive, so I'm going to stop work for the day. But I have got quite a lot done, I've got most of the output side done on this M unit, so tomorrow when I come back I'm going to work on these rather small delicate wires which come from the motor gadget M switches and these go into the input side of the M unit. Once they're into place I can then start testing things in earnest. But I can't yet complete all the wiring because I haven't got certain parts yet. I haven't yet got the RFID keyless ignition system, that's out of stock. While the GPS speedo sensor is now on its way, when that arrives I can get it mounted on the bike somewhere and get it plugged into the output side of the M unit. I've also got to sort out the starter motor circuit and for that I need to find a home for this. This is the starter motor relay. It's just a generic 12 volt part, nothing exciting about it. It's held in this rubber sort of mount and this mount in turn is mounted to the bike by these two sort of slots here in the in the rubber so I've got to make a mount to take that and mount the whole thing somewhere nearby on the bike. How it works is that one of these wires will go to the starter circuit on the output side of the M unit, one of these little holes here. The other one is earth and when power goes through these two wires it will trigger the relay inside here to send power directly from the battery which connects to one of these output terminals across here to the starter itself and so one of these terminals will take power from the battery and the other one will take power to the starter motor and both of those circuits are very heavy duty it takes a lot of power so these will be getting quite chunky uh, wires when I get it mounted on the bike. I can't do that yet, so I'm running out of time, but I'll find a home for it somewhere in here, make a bracket and then we'll get it on the bike. So we'll continue tomorrow. And now here we are, it's the next day and I finally finished wiring up the M unit at least as far as I can. I still don't have of course the ignition key or the starter motor circuit or even the charging system but that's not part of the M unit. So now what I want to do before I start to tidy up all this wiring is to make sure all this works. And to do that I've sort of got to bypass its security if you like. It's got a, um, a port here called lock and nothing will work unless we put power into that port because that's the port that receives power once you turn the ignition key or use your um, keyless ignition system. So to bypass things what I've done is I've got my little test battery here as always and I've got a bit of wire here that I've already prepared and I know that the last port on the import is the lock wire, is the lock, um, lock one. So all I've got to do now is put this wire oops, in here, second I'm getting all six and sevens here and just pop this in here. It's quite a thick wire but it doesn't matter, this will do for the time being. Just pop him in there, press the orange little button to lock him into place. There you go, so that's now locked into place. So if I put power through here, it should, it should in theory, allow the M unit to work. But if I now put power to that, nothing will happen because, I think anyway, because I've, I've not yet powered up the whole thing. So, you know, there needs to be another circuit which earths everything and for that what I've got to do is earth um, all of this to the battery and also provide power to the main power source of the M unit which is here. For that I need about five pairs of hands so what I've got is I've got some crocodile clips here which I use quite a lot. These are very very handy to have. I've got all kinds of sizes here you know I just need to clip things together and I'll sort of jewelry rig it so it thinks it's being powered by the ignition key being turned on. Once that happens then I can start to test the circuits on on the bike. And now I've just jewelry rigged the wiring, I've got the lock with power, I've got the main power source to the M unit here and now I've just got to connect the earth the whole thing and hopefully, hopefully things should happen so here goes. Yeah and there you go, suddenly we've got power and it's telling me you know it's happy, it's not happy. So What's happening here is it knows when it's got an open circuit or not, or when it's got a closed circuit, and these little lights tell you what's going on. So obviously I've got a closed circuit, got power going through the input side, the lock, so that's where the light's on. So if I now go and check the buttons on the handlebar, hopefully some of these should start lighting up and things should start happening on the bike. Okay, so let's have a look what's going on now. 
with power going to the M unit, I've now got power to my Taco Speedo unit, which is showing me all kinds of things. That's fine. So I know I've got power to that gauge. When it comes to the handlebar controls, I know, for example, that the lower button on this side should be the left-hand indicator, but that's not doing anything at all. It is making my gauge go off and on, so that's not good. If I just look here, what's happening? Yeah. It's making things uh, flash, so it's telling me something's wrong. So that's not good. Try the next one up, which is the right-hand indicator. Nothing's happening except the same problem. And I can watch the video in a minute and work out what's going on, because it's helping me here. It's telling me it's not happy. Top button is the lights. Again, nothing happening there. So I've got a problem on that side of things. Uh, the top button on this side is the starter motor, so I don't expect to see anything happening here, apart from perhaps a little light flashing maybe. And middle button's the horn. No. Oh, sorry, middle button's the um, kill switch, I think. And then nothing happening there. So, oops, hang on. Yeah. Yeah, so at least one thing works, my horn works, the, the horn button works, that's something at least. But I can now review the video and just sort of go through it again and work out what's going on. Because the M unit is quite good, it tells me what's going on. The little lights flashing indicate if it's got a problem or not, or where we've got power going to a particular circuit. It may be that perhaps I've not got a good earth somewhere, I don't know, I'll have to just uh, go and do some more checking. But that's what happens, you know, I've done the first attempt at wiring up the bike, and maybe I've made a mistake somewhere, maybe I've got a dry well somewhere, dry soil who knows but um, this M unit does help you along to work out what's going on oh well I knew it wouldn't be easy I knew it wouldn't be uh, right first time but we are getting there we are getting there so I'm just gonna go and check through all of this and make sure I've got a good earth everywhere I'll check the resistance on the circuits and I'm sure we'll soon work out what's going on and that's about half an hour later, so I went back inside, checked the videos, and had a think about what was going on. And I realised that although I had earthed the M unit to the battery, I hadn't earthed anything else, because there are circuits on here which don't earth back to the M unit, but to the frame itself and onto the battery. So I've now doubled up my earth, so I've got an earth to the M unit and also an earth to the main earth uh, connection, if you like, on the frame itself. And that seemed to have done the job. Because now, if I press the lower button here, which will be the left-hand side indicator, we've got a flashing uh, light, that's pretty good. Ditto right-hand side, that works. The front's also flashing, but it's quite, uh, not very bright. I think my little battery is starting to lose power, I need to uh, charge up, I think. Next one up is the lights. So when I put the lights on, you can't see here, but I have got the dipped beam on. Press it again, I get the high beam. Do yeah, didn't quite work. Yeah, that's better. I've got to press it for a, I think half a second or so. High beams on, and also I've got the telltale on the idiot lights on the dashboard, so that's pretty good as well. Turn it all off. I need to just press the button in for two seconds. So I press it in for two seconds, and everything goes off. So that's great. On this side though, on the right-hand switches. The top button's going to be the starter motor, so nothing will happen, of course, except I might get a telltale light coming on on that particular circuit. And I do, and I do, yes, I've got a telltale there, but nothing's going on within the output side because I don't have any circuits yet plumbed into the output side for the starter. Next one up is the horn, and hopefully that will work. Yeah, that works fine. When it beeps, of course, you see the light flashing on that particular circuit on the unit. That's fantastic. And last of all, it's quite interesting. It's the kill switch. I've got a kill switch built into the bike now. So I press that in, it should kill the engine. Of course, I've got no engine, but that doesn't matter because when I press this button here, yeah, you can see a light comes on to show me I've got an open circuit on the ignition, on the ignition leads coming out from the output side of of the uh, the M unit. That's pretty good. We'll press it again. Will it go out? Yeah, it goes out. So pressing it once cuts the circuit and it comes on saying it's doing something. Press it again and it obviously uh, ends that particular that particular circuit and it doesn't do anything anymore. But by then, of course, the engine would have stopped turning over and the engine would be stopped and killed. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy that I worked out from first principles what was going on with my M unit. 
because what I've done here is I've got um, the earth which I had before on the emu itself, but I didn't have this other earth behind here, which is earthing to the frame, which would be the main earth on the bike once the main back is in place. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Everything seems to work, which is a huge relief. Obviously you can't test things like the taco, the actual speedo and so on. Uh, I've not yet got the um, GPS speedo sender. That's not here yet, but it'll be here soon, I'm, I'm told, about maybe in two or three days time. The bad news is that the keyless ignition system, the motor gadget keyless ignition system, which I think is called M-Lock, that's out of stock anywhere in the UK. So I went on the German website for motor gadget itself, where you can actually buy product from, and it's out of stock on there as well. So I may have to just forget about that idea and uh, just fit a standard key, I'm not sure yet, or I may just wait. I guess it's the, uh, you know, global supply chain problems, blah, blah, blah. And so now it's gonna be late, so we'll call that done for the day. I'm pretty happy that everything's worked. As you can see, as soon as I unplug the earth leads, everything stops. But yeah, pretty happy with uh, the day's work. I now just need to tidy up this wiring is a little bit uh, over long here and there. I can just put some zip ties into place and make sure everything is neat as it can be. As I said, it's getting quite late now. It's gone six o'clock, so we'll call that a day. So yeah, pretty happy so far. Everything works that should be working, which is a huge relief, because at first it wasn't. So yeah, we'll uh, end the video here, and hopefully you've learned a bit more about the wiring up of an M unit from Motor Gadget. So uh, that's it for now. So thanks for watching, and cheers.